Hey guys, what's up? I don't know about Welcome to my official Vlogmadon series. I did Vlogmadon last year, so I will leave a link to my videos down below. Today is the day before Ramadan. I just came back from going grocery shopping. I wanted to get a whole bunch of stuff. You know, Ramadan is a little bit different because, you know, quarantine and the whole COVID-19 pandemic. So yeah, I wanted to stock up on stuff before I like chill and just be in like solitude as usual. My fasting times in New York are from 4.40 a.m. to 7.44 p.m. those are my fasting times 15 hours which is not bad at all alhamdulillah like y'all remember fasting in the summertime it'd be like middle of july and we're doing like 17 18 hours like it's nothing oh my god but yeah i am so 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 excited for ramadan 2020 thank you a lot for allowing me to see this ramadan um inshallah this would be a blessed month for us all that we all truly like connect further to Allah and strengthen our Iman and our own sense of spirituality and I'm just so excited so let me tell you guys what is on my agenda for this vlog with on series now here's the thing right I'm not necessarily like vlogging every day I'm not even necessarily like doing weekly vlogs I'm kind of just going with the flow like there's some videos that I planned that I wanted to do kind of like some feature videos and then there's just like regular vlogs that I want to do as well. So just know that you're getting like Muslim content from me but what type of Muslim content I can't really tell you what I'm going to make because I don't really know but I just know that I have a bunch of video ideas and neither really fit too cleanly into vlogging and then just like daily videos you know. At the end of my vlogs i want to do a muslim recommendation which is basically where i recommend a muslim book a muslim show um muslim influencer muslim owned clothing line like something like that something around just supporting muslim people and muslim creativity i have my little book which is where i wrote down i wrote down like my ideas the next thing i want to have in all my vlogs is to showcase a spiritual theme um I want to take each week that I'm vlogging to focus on different themes. I haven't really like gotten them like which ones yet, but throughout this vlog, you will hear me mention what the theme for this vlog and this first week is going to be. And then the last thing that I want to have in all of my vlogs is just Quran reflection. My biggest goal for Ramadan is to finish the entire Quran. I've never finished it in its entirety. I think last year I got to like 55%. Why am I acting like this is Goodreads? <laughs> like, but yeah, I got to like a little bit more than half of the Quran last year, alhamdulillah. And some other goals that I had that I've accomplished and that have stuck. So I'm really happy about that. But my biggest one is to finish the finish reading the Quran, inshallah. But I want to do like a reflection at the end of the video to talk about like the um surahs that I've read, what I've gotten from that, to reflect, you know, like so also. I am going to be staying up until Suhoor. Definitely expect to see some like recipe videos from me. I actually just went grocery shopping, like I said. So I will be doing like a grocery haul. I don't know if people like that, but you know, when you're like an adult, like things like sales at the grocery store, like it makes you excited. Comment down below what your Ramadan goals are. Are you excited for Vlogmadan? Are you doing Vlogmadan? Let me know. I have to put this food away. So let me just show y'all what I got. Okay, so. This is everything that I got. It looks like a lot on camera. Also, I'm like not trying to brag. Um, I know that people are struggling during the COVID-19 pandemic. Your girl is also unemployed and unfortunately had to go into my savings to buy food. Hopefully this lasts me for all of Ramadan. I still have some stuff in the fridge anyway, but I'm not gonna go through everything. But the theme of what I got was I wanted to get a lot of fruit so i have pineapple strawberries mangoes bananas and then more strawberries and that's just for like so hood and also sometimes if i don't want to just eat regular fruit i might just do like a green smoothie for breakfast same thing with the bananas um and i also got an avocado avocado if i want to do avocado toast once i perfect my recipe i will definitely share it with you guys i also got meat i got chicken cutlets chicken wings and then i got ground beef underneath i couldn't find ground turkey which is usually my go-to got bacon turkey bacon and then beef sausages these beef sausages are fire 
love those if you're from new york you already know like what it is a bagel with cream cheese and turkey bacon is fire like last ramadan that was all i ate for sahur so yeah definitely had to cop some again and they're just like normal stuff like juice milk iced tea mix you know how we do and then i just got some snacks but yeah that's about it do you guys like my sweatsuit i got it from boohoo i will be filming a loungewear try on haul i bought a bunch of stuff from boohoo this is actually my bag and the top and the sweats come from boohoo so Y'all ever be having those moments where you feel like you're exactly where you're supposed to be? Like something will happen or like you'll have a situation and you like stumble across it and you just feel like you were meant to be there. You were meant for this, like that thing was meant to happen. This moment was meant to occur. You know what I'm saying? So after I had just filmed like some of my clips talking about like my Ramadan goals and stuff like that, even though they really were genuine and things that I wanted to do, I just ended up on Instagram, like, you know, looking at people, like responding to um, Ramadan Mubarak's and things like that. And my friend Nadira, Nadira P on Instagram, y'all know who she is, love her. She was just on Instagram live and just, Sis was preaching. She was giving a khutbah that I was not ready for. Okay. Like the things she was saying felt so necessary for me. I feel like it was a live I was meant to click on, if that makes, makes sense. Like I felt like I was supposed to be in that moment listening to what she had to say because it was just so impactful. And the fact that I was just like talking about my Ramadan goals. And one of the things she mentioned in the live was that, you know, we really need to get in touch with who we are spiritually. And too many people are practicing um in a way that's inauthentic to their spiritual needs and their spiritual self you know doing things that aren't going to make you feel closer to Allah and I think this stuff was just so powerful and first of all may Allah bless her and make her successful in all her endeavors and give her everything that she wishes at me I love her so much but I feel like I really needed to hear that because I really want to be able to find more of who I am on a spiritual level and I really just want to find a way for me to be as authentic as possible not only from an external or a mental or physical level but also spiritually like what is an action that I need for my soul that makes me feel whole that makes me feel connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know so we are sitting at my desk and um I'm just going to journal a bit. I talked about habits that I've picked up during quarantine time that I wasn't doing as much before and journaling was one of them. I have three separate ones but they all do different things. They're really cute, mashallah. This one is kind of like my diary. I don't necessarily remember where I got it from but it has certain things like certain prompts like this is goals and memories. This is called being in the moment, like what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling um just like reflection and things like that i guess this is the closest thing that i have to like a diary journal this is the one where i can really put as much free thought as i want into it this is just my yearly planner um and it's just a planner i just write down my plan for the year and this one is kind of literally just it's just like pages i really just want to sit down and truly reflect on like what i want to do for ramadan as black women we're taught that our whole life should be in service of others and of course we should be selfless and we should be helpful and we should be there for others and we should be kind and we shouldn't be selfish and we shouldn't be you know feel entitled or anything like that but us as black women severely lack the the ability to take care of ourselves and for me i really just i truly believe that there's no way that i will be able to really help anyone unless i am whole and being true to myself it is 10 14 uh so i have a couple more hours <laughs> until i have a good amount of hours until um sahur a bagel with cream cheese and turkey bacon i think that's what i'm gonna make for sahur i haven't been able to go to the deli for mad long and like the new yorker in me doesn't know how to act like i haven't been able to really get my sandwiches so i'm really about to finesse these bagels it's nothing special i swear but if you've never tried the recipe you should try it um but yeah this is what I'm gonna be doing. While I am journaling, I am going to play my favorite, favorite, favorite reciter, Idris 
Apar. His recitation, mashallah, is beautiful. I love his voice. I love the tone of it. I think I'm gonna play um, Sharmat Minun while I'm sitting here journaling just to really get me in the Ramadan mode. I've been watching um, Romance is a Bonus Book, that K-drama. If you watch it, let me know. Twenty-six in the morning fajr comes in in about 20 minutes this is my first to hold i know i said i was just gonna do my bagel but i really wanted to do something cute because it's the first to hold like i'm probably not gonna cook this much ever again but why not it's literally fried fish um cheese and grits eggs and then hawaiian rolls and then i'm just gonna be drinking my water and i've been listening to some lectures so yeah Let's see if I can eat this in 20 minutes, y'all. So for Ramadan, instead of giving you guys bonnet content, I'm going to give you Jilbab content, you know? Um, this Jilbab is from Ferdosi Collections. I meant to link it in my last video. I didn't. I will actually link it in this video i really feel like the thing that makes me feel really connected to allah is reading no shock but i'm gonna research some really good books if you guys have any muslim book recommendations um please let me know and inshallah i will see you guys in the a.m hi guys so it is the next day and it is currently like 6 30 so we break fast and about an hour in 15 minutes i already started cooking i'm making arroz con pollo the recipe that i got was from manda Jess panda on instagram her ebook she has a bunch of recipes so i bought her cookbook right before ramadan because i knew i wanted to be chefing it up and i've done two recipes so far and they've come out really good alhamdulillah so today i really wanted to try arroz con pollo because i don't know i really like spanish food and i think i'm gonna try to make my own beans question question mark i wanted to talk more about planning for ramadan that's probably what this whole first vlog is going to be only because ramadan is starting and i know people just want to for the people that want to be more organized and be more efficient about how they spend their time during ramadan i find that using journals is just really efficient and so i'm going to talk more about journaling but specifically what i've been journaling something that i wanted to do was make a list of duas that i want i feel like it's just really important to write things down a lot of the times people like you know you make dua in the moment when you're making salah and you know just casually throughout your day but i really wanted to start writing down like my big duas like the things that i really 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 want slash need i think this would be a really good tool for people that are like just struggling in life because i think it's easy for us to lose sight of allah's blessings and his mercy and to not be as gracious and grateful as we should so i think it would just be really cool to write down my duas and then to come back whenever check the duas off the list if they've come true that's one tip that i definitely recommend i also have my official like goals for ramadan that i've written down so far if i can remember any more if i have any other ideas i'll just add that but the first is to finish the quran like i've said before the next is to read more hadiths and more about the prophet like i've said before i also want to cook more and to try different recipes and like branch out in regards to what i'm cooking also um i want to study the 99 names of allah i was listening to omar Suleiman, who is amazing um donate to his islamic research foundation called the yakin institute y'all already know what it is but i will link them down below he did a video recently about the 99 names of allah and how as we as muslims learn more and connect more to the other names of allah how that will impact our life and he was just talking about how to learn more about allah to get a better understanding of allah and to have a better relationship with him um he was just talking about how studying the 99 names can help fill like that void that disconnect that a lot of people feel in regards to allah so that's something that's always intrigued me 
I've always loved the 99 names of Allah because it's just like, it tells you who Allah is. It fills the void between you and Allah in between the acts of practicing and worship such as Salah and other stuff, you know? But um, he was also talking about how um, when you're making a dua and speaking to Allah, if you're asking for something specifically in your dua, like ask Allah for something by that name, if that makes sense. For example, if you're asking for sustenance, especially during this time of unsurety because of the pandemic, you know, referring to Allah outside of just Allah as, you know, ar -Razak, you know, the sustainer and just things like that. I really like that idea about like referring to Allah specifically by his other names and his other attributes. And um, I think that by studying that more, inshallah, we'll be able to add some of those qualities to ourselves. Like, of course, we'll never be Allah, but just to be more patient, to be more kind, to be more merciful. Really, this morning I was making salah and I felt like I had a really, I, it was a salah that hit me in a way that I've never been like, I've never experienced before, if that makes sense. Like, it was just like different. Like maybe it's just Ramadan, but like the vibe was like different. And um, I was like asking Allah for something and I was making dua. And then literally maybe like 10 minutes later, I was just in a position where somebody gave me something that I was ultimately like asking Allah for. And that was just like a really, obviously like full circle moment. Time for me to go check on this food. I hope you guys um, will also be journaling and, you know, just keeping track of your Ramadan goals and your Ramadan plans. Um, I just shredded the chicken. I boiled it, shredded it, and then added it with green peppers, onions, garlic, red peppers. And yeah, I just seasoned it. Now I'm gonna go start on the rice. But this looks really good, oh my God. So as per usual, when it's time for me to break fast, I actually ended up cooking later than I probably should have. I gave myself like an hour to cook. No, I gave myself an hour and a half to cook. But now I know to give myself two hours max if I'm making something that like I've never made before. You would think that would be like self-explanatory. But it's now like 7.50 and I still haven't broken fast, which is bad. Don't do that. Like, don't be like me. I made beans on the side. I'm doing the rice. The rice has about like five more minutes to cook. Old fruit. Um, I'm just going to eat some pineapples and some strawberries and then drink some water. Okay, so this is how everything came out. Yes, I turned on the flash because I'm really that annoying. Um, yeah, this is my arroz con pollo. It looks really good. I'm kind of nervous. Like, what I'm gonna do if it's nasty? <laughs> like, who gonna come eat this? And then I made my, and then I made like red kidney beans on the side with like tomatoes and stuff like that. So yeah, first iftar. Okay, um, if this looks fuzzy and weird, that's just because that is my life but i'm trying my food and i would just wanted to get it on camera because i'm scared okay, I'm just gonna... hold on let me get some beans hold up i may have done something here This is, this is really good. Oh my god. Mashallah. I will link where you can get Manda Just Panda's um, ebook. She's coming out with a second one really soon. Please go support and buy. Majority of my recipes like new recipes that I'm trying are gonna come from that cookbook. So yeah, for all, I'm really proud of myself. Now I know I just need to start cooking a little bit earlier if it's something I've never made before. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have leftovers for a good two, three days. So alhamdulillah, I'm really happy about that because your girl is not trying to be cooking all the time. But no, fasting was really light. It was only a couple of hours. Like it was nothing like, oh, alhamdulillah. I'm so happy because y'all, all I have growing up is memories of like fasting in July and 80 degrees like 18 hours 
Like, this is like no, nothing. I only got a little bit tired because I was doing schoolwork. Like, it was hard for me to focus. And I didn't start getting like hungry till like three. So that's good. Yeah. I will talk to you guys later. For Sahur, like I said, it's just a toasted bagel with cream cheese and turkey bacon. It is fire. It tastes even better with beef bacon if you like beef bacon. I definitely prefer beef bacon, but turkey bacon is healthier. It's not cute, but it's fire. Try it. And comment down below if you do. It's really quick. It's easy. It literally took me five minutes to make it. It is 3.19. So I'm actually eating a little bit early. Um, and then once I finish this, I'm just going to eat some fruit, drink some water, um, and read. I'm going to start The Sealed Nectar today. If you haven't heard of this book, it's a, um, biography of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Honestly, this whole staying up till Sahur thing might have to be a no-go, but I'm so scared to fall asleep and miss Sahur, like, uh, trauma. <laughs> like, y'all know the struggle of waking up and you can't even eat. I am stuffed, I can't eat anymore. My stomach is already shrunken, it's been a day. And my stomach is already like, stop. And I'm just like, Bleh. like, I don't know. It's just me, like everybody has a tendency to overeat during Ramadan. So that's only something I'm gonna have to work on. It's public school as I did my whole life. And at lunchtime, everybody was eating except for me or whether that's at work, your colleagues are eating. And sometimes you even have to attend an important meeting or you've got to go to some sort of function everybody's eating but you those moments are some of the most blessed moments in your life and you probably had no idea hello back in my jill lab hey google what's today's date it's 402 a.m april 26 2020 april 26 saturday day three of ramadan and it is 402 a.m I'm about to start making my suhoor. I didn't really vlog today because my mom popped up and then we kind of like spent the day together. Um, I watched, we watched Parasite and then I let her try some of the arroz con pollo. She said it was really good. So we got a second opinion. And then for the past like hour or so, I've been doing homework while simultaneously listening to Omar Suleiman's series, Quran 30 for 30, listening to that and catching up on the episodes of the Angel series that I missed out on. So yeah, I'm just really busy. I'm trying to figure out how do I combine like my Islamic like education stuff as well as like, you know, the education that I pay for, unfortunately. But also, do we see my ring light? In my reflection my friend anisa came and brought it over um don't worry she didn't like come inside we're still practicing you know social distancing but thank you anisa you are the goat she wanted to ensure that i got quality content for you guys i also ordered a little monitor which is going to help so much so this is what i film with. i vlog with my phone and then i try to film with my canon t3i which the viewfinder doesn't come out so literally y'all i will just put a mirror behind my camera and like keep going back and forth to make sure everything is in focus and so it literally takes me like an hour to start filming just because i'm trying to make sure i'm set up so instead of buying a whole new camera you know i'm black i'm resourceful you know and i'm broke so i got a little monitor and so i could just connect it through the hdmi cord and i can look at the screen through this screen does that make sense yeah i ordered this off of amazon i don't know if y'all care about techie stuff but i'm really excited about this because i feel like it's going to help my content and then now i have my ring light so i have no excuse except for my own like laziness and like depression and anxiety but like okay look it's time to make food so this is the final result i have my fried cheese my eggs my grits my sausage and then my iced tea and i will also be eating fruit and drinking water as well and yeah, I made this. Honestly, I should have started making food a lot earlier. So I'm going to have to like scarf this down. Literally, also, don't do that. That's not healthy. One of these days, I'm going to stop starting or ending the vlog in the middle of the night. I am making sahur. It is 4.22. We start fasting at 4.00. 37 so i ate a bagel with cream cheese i ate some 
I ate some fruit and then now I am making a green smoothie just to wrap it all up and because I feel like I haven't been eating as much vegetables as I probably should. Here's my smoothie. I only have a couple more minutes before I have to pray. So I'm just going to drink this and then read. Hey guys, so I just finished my only class for today. It was a two and a half hour class, but we got out a little bit early, alhamdulillah. So it was only two hours, still girl, stressful, tired, I'm over it. But I decided I might as well do my boohoo haul now, only because I was gonna do a whole separate try on haul, but I want my vlog with on content to be my main content for this month. So I might as well just put it in a vlog. Tomorrow is the end of the first week of Ramadan. So I will give you guys kind of like a weekly wrap up. Very similar to if you watch my regular uh, weekly vlogs. And if you watch my reading vlog, I'm just going to wrap up like my thoughts, my feelings, how I'm doing, um, things I want to work on, stuff like that. But yeah, let me just show you guys what I got. I don't feel like getting up and posing and like trying, like doing all of that. We're, we're not doing that. So I'm going to post pictures of the pieces on the screen. I mean, like. I know like as somebody that's plus size, y'all may want to see how it looks like on me, but I'ma just describe it, okay? So y'all already saw my sweatsuit that I had. I was wearing it the very first day of Ramadan. Um it's not even they don't even match. I wanted to get like matching sets and just call it a day, but Boohoo was like really playing with like prices and sizing and like different stuff. So I had to finesse some sets. These are um, men's joggers. I don't even remember how much everything was, but yeah, these are men's joggers because men's joggers are way more comfortable, the quality is a lot better, and they're really flattering for curvy girls. Period. All I wear are men's clothes. Anyway, sweater. I don't have a lot of crew necks, but I really like these. I'm gonna talk about what I'm wearing. It's like a ribbed, um, off the shoulder, tan colored shirt, and it's super comfortable. I wanted a ribbed, set because i was watching aisha haroon's video and she had one from like nasty gal but it was sold out so i'm like how do i finesse this so i paired it up with these like wide leg cream <laughs> um and it's not the same color but it's, it, it's it's close enough you know it's close enough but these are also super comfy like i was sitting there doing my class and i'm like yo like i literally feel like i'm in pajamas like i'm really so chill so comfortable it's soft and i actually would also wear this outside like if we ever go outside if i ever see the sun again but yeah really like this set as well this unofficial set the only set that i actually got was this one you could describe it as like a teddy bear type of material like fuzzy and it's a true cream a lot of my stuff you see are like neutral tan but i wanted something that was actually going to be cream so i got this matching top which is cropped i actually didn't know that but i'm not mad at it it's cute it's probably a good thing that i didn't do a try on haul because some of these things are not hella <laughs> okay so then i got this plain black bodysuit um 
It's a black bodysuit. It's cute. I just wanted a plain bodysuit because I didn't have, well, the one I have is like a cotton material. This is, I don't know what this material is, but it's not cotton. English, am I okay? No. Next, I got these flare pants. These are so cute, so flattering. If you don't have a pair of flare pants, if you are like lacking confidence or feeling insecure about your body, sis, get you a pair of flare pants and it will change your life. These are so cute, so soft is so comfy and it's black my favorite color so when i wear i'm like girl i look cute period i talked about this on my instagram but i really feel like this is the time for hijabis to really stop playing and start taking care of yourself take care of your hair take care of your body also embrace and like look at your body majority of the time we're covered up alhamdulillah we you know we are wearing hijab for the sake of Allah. However it, is, however, it is still really important for us to love what Allah gave us, which is our bodies. And yeah, like do your hair, sis, if you want to. Try some new styles, get some cute clothes. Y'all just start taking care of yourselves. Then the last thing I got, which is like my favorite item. Oh my God. I don't know what about it that I love so much. It's literally just a V-neck cropped sweater. It's just so cute, so comfortable, and so me. The thing about Boohoo, um, their sizes are mad weird, and the shipping took mad long. So it's supposed to be a week to ship. It took about um, 11 or 12 days, but I know that's because of like COVID-19. Once you get into the plus size realm of Boohoo, they are actually in UK sizes, so um this i ordered oversized so i chose a size 16 for this because i really wanted it to be oversized and as you can see i don't know if you can see that very well but it's come it came in a size 20. the bodysuit i ordered a size 12 and it came in a uk size 16. so these are the things that i knew going into it because i watched aisha's video and she talked about this so i purposely kind of played around with the sizes so that it would fit how i wanted to majority of these are uk size 16. so how many that everything does fit and i really like everything that i got i think i spent like 111 dollars in total which wasn't bad for eight pieces girl so now that i am done with my class for the day i'm trying to figure out what i want to do i'm actually on page 103 of the sealed nectar it's exactly what i wanted it to be i don't know when this became a fold close with me but that's what we're doing it's a story of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam um before prophethood it was a lot of unnecessary information in the beginning like they were talking about like Arab tribes and like what the Arabs are doing before Prophet Muhammad got there and I'm like yeah we know they was walling like all right <laughs> you know but it reads like a history book which is what I liked because I felt like for me as somebody that is deeply intellectual and I constantly go out to seek knowledge there's a part of me that was missing that drive in Islam it was a disconnect somewhere for me I didn't grow up really going to madrasa I didn't go to a Muslim school so I never really had a strong sense of Islamic history but the things that I was always interested in was the story of the prophet something that I was thinking about was I saw this post, if I can find it, I'm gonna put it on the screen, but it was about how having a closer relationship to Allah or being more spiritual or more religious shouldn't replace having a personality and your own sense of identity. And I think that was really important for me to hear because I don't know about anybody else, but for me, a lot of the times when I think about like practicing more or being more spiritual or learning more about Islam or gaining Iman and things like that, the met the way that we see that represented is so boring. Like, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like a lot of the most religious people in our communities are super bitter or super boring or they're know-it-alls and they're like stuffy and they're, they're, you know, nobody wants to be around them. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it doesn't encourage people to want to be more religious because the examples of piety that we see are from people who are disconnected from each other and of course we know that's not from islam like you know there is such thing as being like extreme in your worship the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi like condemns himself um if you guys know the story of the guy i forgot his name the, there was a guy who he was like really pious like always in the masjid always praying extra rakats, blah, blah, blah. He never really came home. And this woman came to Prophet Muhammad and was like, yo, my husband, 
he's at my a like all he do is pray all day he don't come home we don't see him like whatever i'm probably always telling tell him me paraphrasing basically tell him that you still have a duty to the people around you like as important as it is for you to have a relationship with the lost one with Alex, like, it's still important to be here in this moment i just didn't want to lose my sense of self and who i was because i was learning more about islam and i think a part of that is a little bit of an unrealistic fear comment down below if you know exactly what i'm talking about you be seeing those people that are so pious and like so muslim or whatever that means and they're just what you know i'm not saying that a personality comes from like hot on this like that's not what i'm saying at all but a lot of people there's a lot of pressure for muslims of a certain stature um to act a certain type of way that comes across as just very cold and they all act very like it's like a uniformity in how they act they don't have a sense of humor they don't know how to joke they don't know how to be witty and then you be like bro this conversation is mad boring so that's something that i'm definitely trying to work on because i feel like trying trying to get closer to allah should only bring out the best version of you but that doesn't mean that you are now a um changed person in the sense that you can't connect to people you don't have any social skills you don't know how to have fun to laugh there's this fear that being themselves or having fun brings about haramness and if we continue to promote the fact that everything is haram it's really discouraging for younger Muslim people to want to practice more because y'all be acting like there's no ways to have halal fun. Y'all act like there's no way for um, young Muslims to do things that are fun and enjoyable that are also pleasing to Allah. And it's just really hard. It just makes it really frustrating and it's scary for people that probably want to do more Islamically or they want to wear the hijab or maybe even get married or like go to msas and like go to madrasas and stuff but then y'all just be like okay now your life is over you know what i'm saying i don't do that make sense comment down below if you really hey guys so i am ending this vlog here but before i go i want to do my muslim shout out i told you guys early on that i wanted to do a muslim shout out slash muslim recommendation for either like a brand author um, influencer, whoever. I just want to continue to support Muslim people. Today's shout out goes to MJ Collections. MJ Collections is a black owned, Muslim woman owned company. They sell hijabs, they sell dresses, they sell cord pieces, a lot of cute stuff. And they are based in New York City. So if you're on the East Coast or you just want to support small black owned, Muslim owned businesses, I will leave their information down below. If you do decide to shop from MJ Collections, use my code Tahiri10 for some money off for a little discount. They actually just dropped their Jill Babs for Ramadan. They're so cute. There's so many different colors and styles. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and for following me around for my first week of Ramadan. Inshallah, these will get a little bit better. Like I said, I'm trying to like figure out what I'm doing because I haven't been vlogging in so long because I've been home. So I'm gonna try to incorporate more fun content. If you have anything specifically you're trying to see, comment down below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and follow me everywhere at Cecilia Tahiri. Inshallah, you guys are having an amazing Ramadan and I will catch you in my next one. Bye.